thing. Can we just also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and receive you unto myself. That where I am, there you may be also. bless you. You may be seated. Celebrating the life of Jill Bradley. Sunrise, March 5th, 1934. Sunset, June 3rd, 2022. Order of service, selection, Old Testament scripture by Minister Ronnie Laughlin, Del Crest Church of Christ, San Antonio, New Testament scripture, prayer, comfort, resurrection ministry, musical selection, Safe in His Arms, Jasmine Hastings, Obituary Read Silently and Slide Presentation, Resolutions, Recognitions, Special Remarks, Pastor James E. Taylor, First Baptist Church, Sugarland, Texas, Family Expressions, Remembrance, Musical selection, words of comfort, Bishop Kenneth W. McIntyre, Greater Good News Baptist Church, San Antonio, Texas, recessional. The program will proceed as read.
Good morning. As I knew uh, Laura to be a woman of faith, and the reading that I selected, the book of Psalms, Psalms 121, it speaks to people of faith. Then when we have nowhere to turn and there is nowhere to go, that we have to look to the Lord. You will find these words recorded in Psalms 121. I will lift up mine eyes to the hills from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. He that keepeth thee will not slumber. Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is thy keeper. The Lord is the shade on thy right hand. The sun shall not smite thee by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. He shall preserve thy soul. The Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. I have read into your hearing Psalm 121. May the Lord add a blessing to the readers, hearers, and doers of his holy and divine word. We turn now to the New Testament, uh, which speaks to us concerning Christ's offer of eternal life for us. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there were no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them. And they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither crying, neither shall there be any more pain. 
for the former things are passed away. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. I read for your hearing Revelation 21st chapter, verses 1 through 5. May God bless the reading of his word. Let us pray. Father God, gracious master, our sustainer, our keeper, our comforter, and the lover of our souls. We come today, God, with sad hearts, but eyes turned to you. No other help do we know. We come today, God, praying for this family, the family of uh, our sister, who was a mother, a grandmother, a friend, a classmate. God, we thank you for her, her work on earth as a nurse. We thank you for her giving of herself. And now, God, we pray because you've called her home into your arms. And so we pray for this family, Lord. We pray that you will be the comforter in the midnight hour. God, even when there are wonderful thoughts and happy moments and funny things, God, be even in our laughter as we remember our precious soul. Father God, we ask that you would allow the church and the community to be there to minister to this family. Help us to be sensitive. Help us to be committed and consistent even when things slow down and the phone calls stop and the cards stop coming. God, ask, we ask that you would help us to remember this family and to help in any way. God, we thank you for your son, Jesus. And that's why we can come today, hearts sad, but eyes lifted, knowing that Jesus is the resurrection and the life. We know, God, that to be absent in the body is to be present with the Lord. And we thank you for those promises. Be with us today as we celebrate this beautiful life of your daughter. Bless the eulogists. Bless everyone who comes forward to speak words of comfort to this family. We love you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, and we honor you in the precious, perfect, powerful name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Miss Laurel, I called her Jazzy because she was always a diva. I called her Miss Diva. This is my God, baby. But Jasmine is going to sing, and I'm going to make sure she sings. So just sing. Praise the Lord, everybody.
praise the Lord. There is no safer place to be than to be wrapped up, tied up, and tangled up in Jesus' arms. Amen. We bless the name of God. Now, as we look over the life of our sister, I have a slide presentation. Can you imagine? Can you imagine just standing before the king? Praise the Lord. Resolution. In love and memory of Laura Jewel Bradley, whereas we, the pastors, officers, and members of Resurrection Baptist Church, pen this resolution to express our deepest sympathy to the Bradley family. Since it has pleased our Heavenly Father to take Miss Laura Jewel Bradley on to her reward on June 3rd, 2022, we come together to give our respect to her family and friends and to celebrate her life. We resolve that the angels in heaven will rejoice because of Sister Bradley's entrance into the kingdom of God. We also resolve that we, the Resurrection Baptist Church, mourn, but not as those who have no hope, but as those who expect to meet her again in that life beyond the horizon. Therefore, 
we assure the family that they have our everlasting heartfelt sympathy. We commit the family unto the God of all comfort, who is able to sustain them in this hour of sorrow. We extend comfort in the belief that Sister Bradley is now present with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who loves her the most. We further resolve and assure Sister Bradley's family and friends that because of her profession of faith in Jesus, the Son of God, and her acceptance of Christ as her personal and Savior, Lord and Savior, that God has removed her from the weariness of time on earth to peace and eternity above in heaven. We are reminded that Jesus understands all things that transpire in humanity, and that he said in Matthew 11 and 28, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Sister Bradley had fought a good fight, had finished her course. Henceforth, there is laid up for her a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give her at that day. And not only to her, but also unto all those that love his appearance. We finally resolve that a copy of this resolution be given to the family and a copy be placed in the permanent records of Resurrection Baptist Church, humbly submitted, Ray Brown, Senior Pastor, Resurrection Baptist Church, Shirts in San Antonio, Texas. We acknowledge the resolutions of St. Stephen's and now Word of Faith Church and from Phyllis Wheatley, class of 1952. God bless you. If the members of the class of 1952, uh, Wheatley, y'all raise your hand or wave at us there. Amen. God bless you. Nineteen fifty-two. Uh, bless you. Want to acknowledge Pastor Biggs of the St. Stephen's Church. Glad to have you here. If there are any other any other ministers in in the building, won't you stand wherever you are? All ministers in the building, stand. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. I'm going to ask now if uh, Pastor Taylor is here. Yep, yep. truly uh, just honored and esteemed pastor and appreciate of this worship uh, pastor Ray Brown and to the other preachers that are gathered pastors and preachers and to all of the members of the resurrection uh, Baptist Church and and most of all to my esteemed friends uh, uh, to the Bradley family as I have come to know them in a most significant way. Uh, I want to thank them, first of all, for the privilege to come and to share uh, some remarks about your mother uh, and just to be a part of this celebration and commemoration. So I want you to know I don't take that lightly. And then again, I've got to make an apology as a pastor. I learned how to do it right, Pastor, and you know. I do apologize for a resolution not being here for Faith Baptist Church. And uh, uh, we 
we can get that. I don't think it'll get stale. We'll get that to you, and uh, we'll get that in your hands, And uh, because I know that's just right. And so we thank God for that. Uh, now, uh, I was uh, asked to give special remarks, and uh, that I want to do in reflections, and I saw all of the photos, and it really brought back some uh, went down nostalgia lane there, especially with the one with me standing there uh, with uh, my good and uh, which I've come to know her as Aunt Law Jewel. Uh, she accepted me in the family by way of being married to Kathy, who was just like a daughter to her. And uh, so uh, I thank God for being able to cross her paths uh, right now. And I know I'll see her later. We, as I said, that in 1994, I believe it was, that uh, I was introduced to uh, my good friend and affectionately known as Aunt Laura Jewel. And she treated me just like one of the family. And uh, I, I shall never forget that because it is so uh, uncommon in these days uh, for to meet people who are genuine in their presentation. Uh, I don't know about these other pastors, but uh, sometimes I think it's a curse uh, that we can read people uh, like, a, like a fake dollar bill just about. And, uh, and so uh, I was so refreshing for her to accept me. And from there on, we became uh, eating partners. Uh, because she was a connoisseur of fine cuisine. And uh, every time that we would come to San Antonio, uh, I used to call her my girl, because I said, how's my girl doing? And we'd talk about our next eating engagement. She said, the next time you come, we're going to have to eat. And I said, yes. And so I'm so thankful to uh, Susie and to... Uh, DC, as I call her, uh, and then also to Wendy and to a host of uh, grandchildren and, and uh, great-grandchildren. Thank you for allowing me to come into your family. It's, it's just so refreshing, again, uh, to meet genuine people. And so I want to say that to you uh, because uh, it's just so important. Uh, that we be for real in our presentation. And so thank God for Aunt Laura Jewel with that. Now, I know that there's another minister on for words of comfort, but uh, I cannot but help to say a thing or two about comforting you in this time of sorrow. Uh, I know that because we are relational beings is that we become attached to people, and, and uh, when they pass on, uh, it, it hurts. And so, but we know that God transcends hurt because as the old preacher said, there's, uh, there's no sorrow on earth that heaven cannot heal. And so I thank God for that. Uh, so we look forward. Uh, this is not uh, a goodbye to Aunt Laura Jewel because I can see her smiling right now. And uh, I don't know what we're going to be eating in heaven. Uh, but I do know that uh, we're going to get together. And uh, we'll, I'll know her on an extremely different area, more than I did here. And we'll be able to enjoy the heavenly ads. But I know that's for in the future, by and by. But I want to say a comforting thing to you, and I'll take my seat, is that uh, as long as I've been reading the Bible over the years and pastoring and reading and studying, uh, I, I, I re-entered into a verse that is now in my psyche. And every time that I'm at a home going, and this is a home going, uh, this is a celebration. I know it doesn't make sense rationally, and I know it doesn't make sense practically, but it does make sense spiritually. And I know that when we celebrate the home going, and I know how we ought to look at it, but let me say one thing to your family. Uh, how does God look at it? And I, I just want to just run you to a little verse that's nestled away in the 116th number of the psalm, verse 15 to be exact. 
It just simply says these few words. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. That's, that's, that's heavy. That's heavy. Because I, I know you're going to miss me. And I know you're going to grieve when we all leave here. But you know what? I'm glad to hear God's perspective on the whole thing. And it says precious. And, I, and I, I looked at the Hebrew in that word, and that word precious simply means, first of all, she was, and she is, let me put it present tense, she is valuable in the sight of the Lord. Uh, she is costly in the, in the sight of the Lord. But then lastly, I like that last thing, she is loved in the sight of the Lord. And my brothers and sisters and family, I just want to leave it with you. Precious in God's sight. Uh, now she's at home with the master and in the presence of the Lord. To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. And one day I look to get there, like I said, I don't know what we're going to be eating. I don't know if it'll be ribs. I don't know if it'll be collard greens. I, I don't know what it'll be. But it's just going to go better because we'll be reunited. And we'll be able to sit down and eat. And guess what? We don't ever have to watch our diet. We won't, we, we won't have to watch it. Uh, we can eat all we want. Uh, like I said, we can eat all we want. And I'm, I'm just going to be grinning with her. And, I, and I'll look over at her and she'll look over at me and grin. And I'll say, we're here. And we're eating real good. So I want to leave you with that thought. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. Oh, man. I, I'm going to leave you with that. Preacher talks too much there. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Brown. Thank you. God bless you. Amen. Thank you for that, Pastor Thaler. And now we'll have uh, family expressions. You might have a mom. She might be the bomb. But ain't nobody got a mom like mine. Her love to the God is good. Even in the midst of a storm, God is still good. God answers prayers. This is a hard pill to swallow. I have physically experienced pains in my chest. You know the vitamins that you're supposed to take, they're supposed to be good for you. And there's always that one horse pill and you plan on taking it because you know it's good for you. You have to get your mind right. So you swallow it and it goes down sideways. And you try everything within your power to get the pill down. You drink no water, nothing happens. You drink some juice, you eat some bread, and still nothing happens. You jump up and down, pounding on your chest, while swallowing hard and nothing happens. You realize that you just have to go through the process and deal with the feeling that is creating this pain. We all have to go through this process. Granny is my best friend. You know the song, My Buddy? That was us. She is my forever date. She would come and visit me wherever I was located. She was my ride or die. I could talk to her about anything. And you know I could come up with some doozies. My granny is F-R-E-E, -E, earthly problem free. If you don't know, you better ask about me. That means she ain't got to worry about no fake people worrying her. She is at P-E-A-C-E. -E. Granny. You will forever be in my heart. I love you forever and always. every atmosphere. She had a way of sitting you down and seeking, watering your presence with straightforward advice, listening with a kind heart, your trials and strife. 
compassionately hugging your insecurities about life. She was the definition of a Proverbs 31 woman, a woman of strength, distinction, resilient, worth more than rubies and pearls, courageously seeking her land and help raising her grands, making a way time and time again, showing her tribe what it means to be a phenomenal woman effortlessly. Let's cherish every memory, memory of her pushing a fly whip dripped in her finest jewels, every meal and gathering showcasing her charismatic mood. As we pay our respects for a life of love, lessons, and light, let us relish in the thought of her ancestors hugging her so tight. Okay, on grandchildren, on three, say it with me until we meet again. On three, ready? One, two, three. Until we meet again. We can do it better than that. Let's do it. On three, until we meet again. One, two, three, until we meet again. Love you, Granny. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Cecil Bradley, and uh, Laura was my stepmom. And I just want to share a few thoughts of my relationship with Laura. Um, I believe I can count on one hand how many times I felt unconditional love. And I guess one would be God, my grandmother dear, my birth mom, and my aunt Emily. And last but not least, Laura always made me feel unconditional love. I had that from her. And uh, we had a great relationship. And I just wanted to say, you know, uh, I love Laura because, you know, she first loved me. And, uh, and I will, she will, she'll be missed. You know, uh, she was a great stepmom. Thank you, guys. Amen. God bless you. Now, if there are others of you who would like to have brief remarks, I'm going to ask that you would come at this time. Amen. God bless you. Have a uh, my name is Ronnie Lofton. Uh, I've known Lara Jewel for almost 50 years. And I, I call her an earth angel. And I, I don't give that title to very many people because the earth was a better place for her have been here, having been here. I, I, nev I never saw her upset. I, I never saw her uh, lose it. She was always even killed. She was always kind. She was always sweet. And I know that when I, every time I saw her, she would always give me that thousand watt Lara Jewel smile and always open her arms and welcome me every time we saw that. I used to be her son-in-law. I used to be her son-in-law. And we have always had that connection because there was never any animosity or animus between us. Susie and Sydney. Where's Susie? No, oh, that's Susie. Susie and Sydney and, and uh, Wendell Clark. And of course, Keith Ken is now deceased. Uh, they, were, they have always been my family. Every time I've looked at them, it's always been in the vision of family. And one thing that sticks out um, that, that I. And <laughs> An interaction I had with Laura Jewel. We were home for the weekend, and I was sick. I was I had a bad, really bad cold, and I was it was probably maybe one o'clock, two o'clock in the morning, and I was coughing up a lung. I mean, I was hacking and hacking and hacking, and I'm I'm in the army now. You know, I'm I'm this man and the army man, and here comes this angel, this earth angel. I don't know if it was the nurse in her or she just wanted to hear me shut up from coughing so much. And she comes in there with this bottle of cough syrup 
and this spoon. Now, I, I could have, I was willing to lay there and just cough and cough and cough, but she came in there with this, you know, I, I mean, she just, she just looked like this angel coming in there and giving me, like I'm six years old, this cough syrup to, you know, for me and for her. And that incident stuck out out of all the interactions I had with Laura Jewel, that particular one that she came and, and, and ministered to me in the middle of the night uh, because I was sick at that time. So, you know, I've always had special memories of her. Uh, you know, she will always be uh, an earth angel in, in, my, in my heart, in my mind. And I remember her uh, as I look at, remember Gami? You know, that, that when Gami would be there, and Lara, I see where the Lara Jewel got that from. Because Gami was nice and beautiful and sweet and kind and caring. And Lara Jewel was the same way. And I don't, know of any, I don't know of anyone that would have a bad word to say about her because they'd be lying in, through their teeth because Laura Jewell was an earth angel. Thank you. Amen. God bless you. Going to have a selection. After this, we're going to have a selection, and then Pastor McIntyre will come with words of comfort. God bless you. Thank you. I would be remiss if I didn't say something about my auntie. Her brother was my father, and I just want to tell you guys, from my heart and from Letitia and Edith, we love you, Susie, Wendell, Sydney. And everyone else, you know, we're here for you. And I just couldn't sit there without saying how much we care and how much we are here for you. And I know Harold, my dad, loved his sister so much. And we love you. And just thank you for being there for us when he died. And we're here for you 100%. If you need anything at all, I know Letitia and Edith feel the same way, and we love you guys, okay? That's it. Take me to the kingdom. I don't have much to bring. My heart's all in pieces, it's my offering. Take me to the King, truth is all time, options are for you. I'm trying to pray, but where are you? I'm all changed now, hurt and abuse. I can't face what's left. strength to fight, no tears to cry, even if I try, but still my soul refuses to die. don't have much to bring 
We're chasing after you. Oh, no rules, no religion. I made my decision to run to you, the healing that I need. Take me to the king I don't have much to bring my heart torn in pieces is my offering just take me to my My friends don't treat me like they used to since I laid my burdens down. Right. Amen. We're not here because somebody died. We're here because my godmother lives. Is there a witness? And looking at y'all, I know if love could keep her here, she'd still be here. But God loved her best. Amen. I thank God, amen, for all of the years. I thank God for my two sisters and, uh, amen, my brother. And I had the privilege of her naming me Kenneth Wayne. Amen. Just different on the end. Kenneth Wayne Straight, Kenneth Wayne McIntyre. I thank God for her. She, wherever I was, she could find me. Amen. We might not see each other, amen, on a regular basis, but, uh, you know, I know she loved me and I loved her. Amen. So, amen, keep, amen, family in your prayer. First, giving praises to God, and then honor to my Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ, to the angel of this church, amen, Dr. Ray Brown, amen, to all of the ministers that grace the pulpit with me, amen, to my little brother over there on the organ, amen. Uh, we're just thankful, amen, to be here, amen. Uh, pray for us, amen, please, because this is uh, tough right now, amen. Yeah, we, we stand over a lot of people all the time. 17 funerals last month. It's just, I told the church, death is at all of our doors. Amen? But we better be ready. Death ain't a bad thing if you know where you're going. Amen? So you got to make sure, amen, that you have, amen, the place you need to go to and you put up something to get there. Grandma said, I'm sending up my timber every day. Amen. Amen? I was born by the river in a little tent. Oh, like the river, I've, I've been running, I've been running, 
ever since. It's been a long, long time coming, and I know a change is going to come. Oh, yes, it will. I go to the movies, and then I go downtown. I look for my so-called friends, yeah, but they're nowhere, nowhere around. It's been a long, long time coming, and I know change is going to come. Oh, yes, it will. It's been too hard living, but I'm not afraid to die. Because now I know what's up there beyond the sky. It's been a long, long time coming, and I know change is going to come. Oh, yes, it will. There were times when I thought I wouldn't last for long. But see, my God, he made it able. Yes, sir just to carry on it's been a long long time coming and i know change is gonna come oh yes it will but oh then i go to my brother. I say, brother, won't you help me, please? Oh, yeah. But then he wind up knocking me all the way down on my knees. There were times, oh, when I thought I just wouldn't last, oh, for long. But see, God made it able for me to carry on. It's been a long, long time coming, and I know. Change is going to come. Oh, yes, it will. Keep on living. Amen. A change is going. Amen. To come. Would you bow with me? Father, it is in the name of Jesus that we come at this hour with our heads bowed toward the mother's dust. We come to say thank you, Lord, because you have been good to us. Better than we've been to ourselves. Oh, Father God, we come, Father God, hearts heavy, minds confused. But we're thankful that you said you're a heart fixer and a mind regulator. Father God, we thank you for your goodness, your mercy, and your grace. We have special blessings, Father God, upon this, our family. Breathe on us right now and let us feel your burning and fiery presence. We thank you for all of these that have come. Lord, I thank you for the life of my godmother, Father God, because truly she's a real mother. Father God, Master, when we were sick, she was there. Whatever we're going through, she was there. And I thank God for just the privilege of being around my sisters and my little brother. I thank God for the name, Kenneth Wayne. Oh, Father God, Master, whatever we may have failed to ask in this prayer, we pray you would grant it. Whatever you see that we stand in need of, please grant it like only you can. 
we be mighty careful to give your name the praise and the glory and all that rightfully belong to you. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, fall fresh on me. My Lord, my strength, and my redeemer. In Jesus' name we ask it all. And everybody said amen. There is a man, a word from the Lord. Amen. We're not going to be long because, amen, so many great things were said about, amen, my godmother. You know one thing about that, I didn't have to lie. Y'all don't get that right now. All that was said about her is true, amen. She had a lot of scriptures that she loved, but there's one that I know, amen, she loved. Coming from the 23rd number of the song. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your God and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. Thank you, Jesus. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. May the Lord add a blessing to the reader and the hearers of his word, and may it serve the purpose for which it was read. Looking, amen, at this 23rd number song, I just want to use, amen, two words. The Lord. Look at your neighbor. Say, neighbor. The Lord. In the text, amen, we, it's revealed to us in this book of Psalms, amen, that Psalms comes from the Greek word psalmist, which means songs and praises. It also comes from the Hebrew word suffer to helium, which means books of praise. Psalms has more, amen, than one author. It has been attributed to David, to Moses, to Asaph a Levitical singing group called the Sons of Korah. In the text, it gives us, amen, a view about David. David, whom God loved. David, even though he messed up, God still loved him. Is that a witness? In life, we're going to have some ups and some downs. But when you're a child of God, we don't have problems no, 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 no. We call them problems if you ain't saved. But if you're saved, amen, it's a challenge. Is that a witness? Amen, amen. David here, after going through incest in his house, where, amen, his own son slept with his sister, where he had that young man called the golden Hat name, who was Absalom, amen, who would God put things in the way so that, amen, nobody would see David. But let me tell you something. You better be careful how you mess with a child of God. Later, they find him down the road, and he's hanging on a tree where he's been speared by that pretty hat. David had some challenges. David had a son, amen, that was on his deathbed. Amen. David just stopped taking care of himself. Let his hair get long. Let his beard be alone. But he came to the conclusion to say this about his son. You can no longer come to me, but I can go to you. The Lord. Well, what about the Lord? Strong and mighty, powerful, king of kings, Lord of lords. Grandma said he's the lily in the valley, the bright and morning Star. David, amen, in our text today, amen, was looking across at a neighbor's backyard. 
And while looking over, he saw this beautiful woman. And he cared so much when he seen her that he decided he had to have her. Even though he had a house full of women, is that witness? But he chose to go across the fence. In doing so, a man, his friend Nathan came by to see him. He said, David, something's going on in the kingdom. He said, well, Nathan, what's going on? He said, a man had a little lamb. And he loved this lamb so much. But he took the lamb from the owner. David said, but I tell you what, take me to him. I'll do something with him. Nathan said, David, you're the one. You're the one. And he was so, amen, greedy that he sent her husband, Uriah, off to war, and he was killed on the front line. When this man would sleep at David's door, y'all don't hear me, amen, the Lord, the Lord has been good to us. He's good, amen, to my mother. Seeing her through the years, amen, he held her in the hollow of his hand. The children the same way, amen. She had children everywhere because she loved everybody. She took care of you. Come to the house, she's going to feed you. I heard the pastor say that earlier. But we have to understand, amen, that long as we're in this stuff called the flesh, y'all, we're going to sin. Just because you've saved don't mean you won't sin. Scripture says, if you sin, and you just, y'all don't hear me, if you sin, He's just and faithful to forgive your sins and then clean you from all unrighteousness. What a God we serve. You know, that was a lady, a man who had a watch, and she loved this watch so well. Sydney, Cora, Wendell. And one day the watch stopped working. She went around town to try to find somebody that would fix her watch. She couldn't find nobody. Well, one day while cleaning her home, she found a box that the watch came in. There was a warrant that said, if this watch ceased to keep time, put it back in the box and send it back to the manufacturer. My mother's in a box, and she's on her way back to the manufacturer. Is that witness in here? You see, we have to make preparation to meet the Lord. Amen, amen. If you don't have Christ as your Lord and Savior, just say farewell, mother. But if you have Christ as your personal on you say, good night, I'll see you in the morning. Amen? Uh, getting back to David, I'm going to close in a minute. David knew how to lay flat on his face and pray. In this situation he's in, amen, he somehow just for a little while lost his mind. Because, amen, he wouldn't have got that far, amen, if he hadn't had something wrong with his mind. He knows this God that's taking care of him. He knows when he was a little dusty, ruddy boy out in the field, when they called him, amen, to be where he is today in the text. But he knew David's heart. Did y'all know mama's heart? She'd take anybody in, like I said, she had a great heart. Here David is, amen, going through this trouble. And now, amen, he's got to pay for what he's done. Don't think, amen, that that you do, you're going to get away. Just boot on over and get the whipping and get back in gear. Amen? But now David had to pay through suffering, through family members and all that he had to suffer. But he came to the conclusion, the Lord. The Lord's what, David? Is my shepherd. I don't have to want. He takes care of me. He even takes me by still water. Sometimes God has to lay us on the couch, amen, to be our counselor to help get our minds right. Amen? Yeah, yeah. See, because let me tell you something. If you're not saved, you got a challenge. You can live any kind of way and go to hell. But if you want to see Jesus, you got to make preparation Huh? If you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that God has raised his son from the dead, and ye shall be saved. For by grace are you saved, not of yourselves, for the gift of God. Now, you don't have to accept it. Amen. But it's yours. Salvation is free, but it ain't cheap. Because Jesus died on the cross. Is there a witness? 
Uh, when, I, when, when I see David and I see his struggles, I'm reminded of myself. I'm not free from sin, nor are you. But we have to know, amen, it's not a sin, amen, to be tempted. Y'all hear me? Amen, it ain't a sin to be tempted. But guess what? Yield to temptation, that is a sin. So here we are. Don't worry about where mama is. Because to be absent from this body is to be present with the Lord. Amen. She made preparation through the years. She loved the Lord. She gave the Lord everything. Amen. At the end, amen, they shared with me, amen, she didn't want to use her phone no more. She was through with this world. God allowed her to make her way. If you got a good relationship, that's what he'll do. Her relationship was not new, amen. She had been with him a long time. And God will pay you, amen, for your work. Work without faith is dead, and faith without work is dead. As I go to my clothes, amen, a woman early in the morning was making her coffee and breakfast, and she looked outside of the yard, and there were two men, Dr. Biggs, and she'd never seen them before. So she was so upset, she called the police department and said, listen, there's two men outside my door. I don't know who they are but they're here. Well, by the time the cops got there, they were gone. So she got ready, got herself together. She said, well, I'll do my shopping today. She went to the grocery store. She saw the same two men. So she called the policeman at the grocery store. She said, listen, this morning, two men was at my house. I don't know who they were. She said, but the same two men is in the store. So they went out to check and see, but when they got there, they were gone. So she decided, well, I've got to pick up, amen, some clothes that I bought out of Lailway. I'm going to pick them up. So she went to the mall. While going up one side of the escalator, there were two going up on the other side. And so she called the mall police and said, listen, this morning, two men was at out my house in the front. Just there. I don't know who they were. Two more men, same men was at the grocery store. And now they have the audacity to be here at the mall. So I don't know who they are. And so she said, well, I tell you what, I'll just go by the church and talk to my pastor. She said, brother pastor, this morning, two men was outside in my front yard. I don't know who they were. So I left the house and went to the grocery store, and they were there. I don't know who they were. But then I went to the mall, and those same two men were at the mall. Say, Pastor, do you know anything about them? He said, I sh said, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Y'all don't hear me. It was surely goodness and mercy. We will follow you all the days of your life. I'm glad, amen, today that, amen, to see, amen, my family, and I'm more glad to know that mom was all right with the Lord. Is there a witness? Uh, I believe she said, Father, I stretch my hand, nor that draw thyself for me. Oh, well, shall I go? She said, I'm moving on up a little higher, yeah. I found the Lord. I found the Lord at an early age. He reached way down. And he picked me up. Grandma says a wheel in the middle of a wheel. Bread in a starving land. Water in dry places. He's the chief cornerstone. He's the stone who got the mountain. He's a meek and humble lamb. Anybody in here know who Jesus is? Every now and then my call him, I say, operator, operator, get me Jesus on the line. Won't he make a way out of no way? Won't he do it? Have you tried, my Jesus? Say yeah, say yeah. Won't he, won't he, won't he, won't he? Pick you up when you're falling down. Won't he, won't he, won't he, won't he? Make a way out of no way. Won't he, won't he, won't he, won't he? Be there in the midnight hour? Yes, he will. I don't know about you, back, back train. Get your load. Back, back train, get your load. I'm going home on the morning train, because the evening train might be too late. 
Y'all don't hear me. Try my Jesus while you have a chance. He's able to keep you from falling. Let me call up a witness right about now. Paul, what happened to you? Well, I was hurting God's people. And one day, while I was going on my way to Damascus, he shined the light and outshined the sun. It was the S-O-N shining over the S-U-N. Come on here. Yes, it knocked him off his horse. But when he got up, he said, Lord, 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 have mercy on me. Paul also said, every time I would do good, evil is always present with me. Evil is always going to be around. Self is a bad boy. He said, if you're going to come to me first, deny yourself. Take up the cross and follow me. Jesus paid it all. All to him I owe for sin had left a crimson stain, but he washed it white as snow. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. He died on Calvary's cross, had no sin. When they marched him up to Calvary, and they laid him on the cross. They nailed one hand. They nailed the other hand and put a ribbon in his feet. But he said in his word, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men, women, boys, and girls unto me. He's been drawing ever since. But they put him in a borrowed tomb. The tomb belonged to Joseph of Arimathea. He said, I only needed three days, and you can have it back. Found out a man that the man who sold fish in the market, he was upset with Jesus because Jesus fed 5,000 with two fish, five loaves of bread. The baker was upset because Jesus took that bread and fed 5,000, plus he took up 12 baskets of fragments. The eye doctor was mad. Because he stopped by blind Montemarie and gave him his sight back. Y'all don't hear me. Not only that, amen, the doctor was so upset because he healed a woman who had an issue of blood for 12 long years. Y'all don't hear me. But I say this, make Jesus your choice. Is there a witness? Say amen. I've learned just to live holy. I've learned how to live right. I've learned, I have learned how to suffer and to suffer. It will be turned no lie. Oh, I've learned just to live holy. I've learned how to live right. I've learned how to suffer and to suffer. It will be turned, no lie. When I see Jesus, amen. Hallelujah. When I see Jesus, amen. All of my trials and my troubles, they will be over. But when I see Jesus, it will be a, 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 a. amen. Amen, amen. May the Lord bless and keep you as our prayer. Amen. Continue to, amen, pray for us and the family. Amen. Pray for us. Amen. It's not over yet because, now you know, Mama's still living, but she's on the other side now. And it's going to bother us a long time. But guess what? He's able to keep us, y'all. He'll hold us in the hollow 
even of his hand. And I asked him to continue to be the unseen guest with us everywhere we go. He even dispatched the angel, Michael, the one who stands with the sword, to God protect and keep, because we know he can. We love you, we love you, and let's put your hands together, amen, for this, our family. We thank God for all that he has done. words. I want to ask now that those of you who are going to be accompanying us to the cemetery, uh, be, be certain that you put your emergency flashes on. Uh, we have a good little ways to travel, uh, so let's, let's be very careful in our travel. Amen? Yes, sir. Amen. God bless you. Won't you stand? So when me and my father's house are many mansions, if it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, there ye may be also. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you yet a little while, and the world seeth me no more, but ye seeth me. Because I live, ye shall live also. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth, I give unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. to be with my Lord. 